the way the season ended for you? Uh, kind of what were the emotions of it, watching it from the sideline, f hoping they could advance maybe to a point that you could come back to actually help them? Yeah, it was tough. Um, kind of felt helpless, but it's all done with, so I can't dwell on it anymore. What is the status of your kind of elbow, and how's everything feeling? Is it at a point where it's healed, or just kind of where are you? Um, I'm assuming it's healed. I, that's kind of what the doctors told me. Is it's just a matter of time. I've been um, full go with my training. Um, they said just to kind of go treat it like a normal off season now, and I just I'm not at the point where um, I've started throwing. So. When, sorry, when would that be for you? Uh, right after Christmas, first part in, of January. Yesterday, uh, Mike Maddox hinted at maybe changing his program, throwing program between starts a bit. Um, is that something on your radar? Anything, you know, changing up between starts could help you and all that for this year? Um, yeah, I would say it's probably just knowing when to take a break. And uh, I think the biggest biggest thing from last year is I had a new pitch and I probably abused it. So I need to go back to what I've thrown much longer and not necessarily stop throwing it, but just don't let it take place on the other pitches that I've, my body's been accustomed to for years. The, um, what you were doing in the bullpen during the playoffs, the fact you were able to do that and throw off a mound, do you think ultimately that, that's going to help you in terms of like you're not showing up uh, February spring training and throwing off a mound for the first time, that kind of in the back of your mind you, you know you were able to do that and that, that's sort of comforting to the mind? Sure, and I think, uh, you know, I've, I'll be throwing off a mound before spring training starts too, getting ready for that. So um, I don't really, I'm not going into it thinking like the last time I was off a mound, I was, uh, you know, had to get taken out too. So it's obviously um, a good a good thing, but um, I'm just going to treat it like a normal off season and uh, keep working hard. How do you assess or evaluate your season? And look at what was really strong in the first half and then you know, before you got hurt. Which, you know, I don't know. How do you assess the evaluation? Uh, polar opposites, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I guess it's, it's the cards that I was dealt. So, you know, he had some highs and he had some lows, and um, they were kind of all bunched together. So, I'm just going to try and take what I did in the first half and when I was healthy. And um, biggest thing is, is do everything I can to make the adjustments to stay healthy for the whole season next year. Well, while you're working out and stuff, you start throwing in a few weeks, I guess. When does it no longer kind of even enter in the back of your mind that? You know, you're still kind of coming back from that, and that there was something wrong before. Uh, I mean, it's uh, that's long gone, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I think I've just kind of changed my program a little bit, and I'm really emphasizing getting my forearm stronger. And I did stuff like that in the past, but it wasn't like a little as as much as I'm doing now. So, you know, when you get older and you've had Tommy John, you gotta you gotta kind of tweak it a little bit because you know muscles in your in your arm are just going to maybe change a little bit. Um, so I just got to make more of an emphasis on, uh, you know, slowing everything down and, and really getting the most out of uh, the exercises. You got the extension out of the way in May and you can just concentrate on getting ready for the season instead of worrying about free agency now. I think anybody would say that, but I'm just, um, that's kind of not really why I play this game. You know, I was frustrated at the end of the year not to be there with the guys and and that's kind of my big motivation going into this year. Um, just because you sign an extension doesn't mean that the work's all all done. You know, there's there's another hopefully seven years with this team, and uh, you know, I want to I want to be there. I don't want to miss any more time. So, I'm not saying that's you know not going to happen. There's sometimes you're going to get hurt, and there's no nothing you can do about it. But um, I'm going to continue to try and figure out this puzzle, and uh, hopefully. This next year, I'll have a better grasp on uh, what I need to do to stay healthy. When you guys were in the playoffs, a lot of people were kind of wondering when could Steven Strasburg yeah. come back. Um, was there a target date in mind if you guys last minute? I don't see you guys come up World Series. Well, I, th I think um, in my head, I was hoping to, you know, at least be ready for the next um, next round, um, and at the latest, the World Series if we got there. So I, I didn't really. Uh, at any point, shut it down and think that my season was over. So. You mentioned the, the new pitch and stuff. From where we were looking and watching, the slider and cutter thing looked pretty effective. Were you happy with what that added to your arsenal? Yeah, I was happy with it, but I think my, my big issue with that is that it, it being a new pitch, it was easy for me to to not be able to repeat it. 
and I would get around it and it'd get too big. And that was the one thing I feel like I was doing in the first half is that I was, I was throwing it a lot more consistently. And just for whatever reason, I don't know if it was fatigue or, I mean, who knows, I'm trying to still figure that out. But I just started coming around it a lot more and uh, not really getting that feel of going, staying behind it. And um, just really aggravated my forearm. It's almost to the point where, you know, I led with extra tightness and soreness after starts and then eventually uh, a little little tear in the pronator tendon. So I think the biggest thing, like with all your pitches, is being able to repeat them and throw them correctly. And uh, when I was throwing it that much, um, I think it was became easy for me to kind of get get lazy with it and, and maybe um, fatigue a little bit quicker because it's just an, a new stress on your arm that you really have to build up um, with over time, but you have to do it the right way. It's not like any guy can just all of a sudden throw, you know, a split finger fastball and have that be a secondary pitch and, and uh, you know, have it take place of the two other pitches that are working for you. So. Is it, it a, uh, eliminating that then? No. I'm not going to eliminate it, but uh, yes, I, I think um, there's my, I could have thrown my change up a lot more earlier in the count. I could have thrown my curveball a lot more earlier in the count. And I think that's the big, big learning thing that I had from that is that, you know, those those pitches showed themselves with later in the count when I was ahead with two strikes. Um, but the early contact pitches, for the most part, they trended towards being that cutter slider and not even my fastball. So I'm going to just continue to fine tune my change up and my curveball and use those use all my pitches at any time in the count instead of just wait to two strikes and and show them all. But it, and whereas early in the count, I was really just showing fastball cutter. And that's just, I don't need to do that just yet. Is it a tricky thing when you always want to evolve as a pitcher, you always want to make improvements, to then also remember what you've been successful with and that like it's okay to go back to what you've done that's, been, that's worked for you? Yeah, I think uh, you always, you're, you're always trying to improve your game. And um, it's, it's tough because, you know, I had success with it. I didn't really think that, um, you know, anything was, was going on. I just know that simple based on my symptoms, that pitch became the one pitch that didn't really feel good throwing anymore. And with that said, I, I think a lot of it, just looking back on the numbers, I think a lot of it was just was overuse. And, um, you know, my arm just wasn't accustomed to throwing that pitch that many times because it's like I was throwing it significantly more even when I didn't have it compared to if I consider it more of a, a slider based on, you know, the movement and stuff and the stress it put, it's put on my arm and not just like a natural cut fastball. Well, I think it's just I got I got I fell in love with it, and because um, it was working, and it was especially the first half. I mean, it was it was a, a quick out, and you know it's it's tough when you're trying to go deep in the games and you're trying to have a pitch that you can rely on that's not necessarily your your four seamer that they're sitting on early in the count um, that you can make you know force them to put the ball in play and minimize your pitch count because I think that's the thing is when my changeup and curveball are on, they're their approach has always been it's like making throw a first strike I'm not going to swing at it so even if I do execute the pitch I still got to throw another one to try and get him out so that's kind of a thing that I really I guess can't wor worry about too much you know I, I need to still feature it all because you know I'm not going to sit here and and change my repertoire just for what they're trying to do and I think that's kind of what I started to do. Did, um, did you I'm trying to remember did you overlap the work at all with Derek Norris when he was here the first time around? Yeah, I don't remember if we ever were in a spring training game together, but I know he's caught like a couple of my bullpens okay. um, before. I remember just sort of there. Your thoughts on him as as the guy you're potentially going to be working with a lot now? Yeah, I mean he's a he's a he's great back there. He works really hard. Uh, he, he cares about catching, and you know he's obviously got some uh, got some pop in his in his bat too to help out there. Um, I think I think it's going to be fun because you know playing against him too when he's with San Diego and then when he was in Oakland, um, you just kind of see that presence that he has and uh, how he kind of commands uh, you know the pitching staff and you know how he how he receives pitches, how he you know even talks to the umpire and stuff. Um, his energy is is something that really stuck out with me when uh, we were facing him. How does that help a pitcher? Just having a guy back there who's I think a lot of times you get in a situation where you might be kind of unsure on the pitch that you want to throw or you may be second guessing yourself and then you just have that little bit of assurance back there that you're he's seeing what you're seeing um, it 
just that's the biggest thing is just commitment to every pitch and and if you can uh, if he can help you with with committing to it even even when you have that little thought in your head that's like should I be throwing this pitch I think it helps